Hey everybody, welcome back. Apology at eighth grade physical science. Today, week two, day four, textbook pages 32 through 35, notebook page 37. Basically, this is just experiment 1.2, um, practice collecting and analyzing data with pendulums. All right, so the purpose is to explore collecting and analyzing data using tables and graphs while investigating pendulums. The materials that we're going to need are uh, string, masking tape, stopwatch, we have our iPhone, we need some pencils, we need some paper clips, um, we need some washers, we have a whole container of washers, we already have five pulled out, half a piece of cardboard, we already have that, a protractor, and a metric ruler, we have that as well here and here. All right, so we haven't made any changes to the material. The question we're gonna be answering in this lab, how does changing the mass of a pendulum affect the number of swings in one minute? How does changing the length of a pendulum affect the number of swings in one minute? So now you have time to write your hypothesis down, write your prediction of how the number of swings of a pendulum will change as mass is changed, Write your prediction of how the number of swings of a pendulum will change as length is changed. You probably need about two, um, two hypotheses there since this lab is sort of uh, broken in two. All right, so let's get started. Procedure part one, mass. Write what the independent and the dependent variables are in the data section of your lab notebook. All right. So we have to decide which variables we're going to keep constant and which is the one we're going to be testing. So I've go ahead and written down the data table for mass. I've decided that the independent variable is the mass or the number of washers we're going to be adding to the string and the dependent variable are the average number of swings for 60 seconds. That's gonna be plotted on the Y axis. All right, step one, step two. You must keep all of the variables constant except the one you're testing. So to keep the height from which you release the pendulum the same each time, follow these instructions. With the protractor, draw a dotted line down the center of your paper or cardboard. Then position the protractor to the center line of the protractor. 90 degrees is on the dotted line as shown in figure 30. Draw a solid line about 20 degrees from the dotted line as shown. So there's your protractor. That's what we're going to mimic. So there you go. We drew our 90 degree straight down line and then we did a 20 degree angle coming out using that protractor. We then taped the card to the edge of the table so that it hangs down and you can see the lines that you just drew. With the ruler, we measured out, I wanna, I wanna go ahead and put that on. With the ruler, measure out 32 centimeters of string, tie one end of the string to the end of the pencil. Then we needed to tape the pencil to the top of the table so that it lines up with the dotted line on your paper and hangs out over the edge enough that the pendulum can easily swing. Next, tape the paper clip and bend it so it has a loop at the, at the top and a hook shape at the bottom. It should sort of look like a Christmas ornament hanger Tie the other end of the string hanging from the pencil to the loop on your paper clip. You now have a pendulum. Check to make sure that the string of your pendulum lines up with the dotted line on the card. If it doesn't, adjust the pencil or the card to make it line up. The string shouldn't touch the card so that it can freely swing, but you should be able to see that the string lines up with your dotted line when looking at it directly in front of it. Now you will test the effective mass on the number of swings. Add one washer to the paper clip. We did that. Pull the paper clip back from the rest position so that the string lines up with the solid line you drew on the card. 
When your helper says go, release the paper clip and count how many times the washer pendulum swings back and forth in 30 seconds. One swing is counted from the release position to the other side and back to the release position. We're going to multiply the number you counted by 2. This gives you the number of swings per minute and is known as the period. Then we're going to record the number in your data table. So as soon as the helper is ready, yeah, we're close to the table. There you go. Ready, sir? So as you can see, we've done our three trials for using one washer on the bottom of the paperclip hook. Now we're going to do the same experiment by adding a second washer and collecting our data. If we can add it on there. All right, we're going to wait for our helper to, let it, to tell us what we're doing. We'll collect the data and we'll be back. Okay, as you can see, we have completed part one um, and the data table for mass. So we um, varied the number of washers from one until one until five. We kept length constant, and then we did three trials um, and gathered that data. And then we calculated the average number of swings in 60 seconds. And as you can see, that data really didn't change. All right, you're gonna to have to plot that out and hopefully be able to see what type of relationship the independent and the dependent variable have. Next up is part two. Okay, part two of this experiment. Um, remove, we removed three of the washers and it is from the paper clip. We will have two washers on the paper clip for the rest of this part of the experiment. We measured the length of the pendulum, measured from the top of the paper clip to where the pendulum is attached to the pencil. It should be about 30 centimeters. We're going to record this measurement in the data table. Then we are going to repeat steps eight and nine three times and then record our data. Ready? As soon as our friend's ready to start. Three, two, one, go. All right. Uh, we have to shorten our pendulum to about 25 centimeters by winding the string around the pencil until we get the correct height. We're gonna record this measurement. Jimmy, what is the measurement? It is 25 centimeters. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and record 25 in the length. Go ahead and get started on the number of swings when you're ready. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so as you can see, we have completed our data table number two, um, varying the length. We started at about 30 centimeters and got all the way down to 10 centimeters. We kept the number of washers constant. We had two washers the entire time. And you can see we collected the data and we've calculated the average. We're going to work on graphing both of these tables. We'll be back in a minute. Okay. So as you can see, we've taken the data that we collected for experiment 1.2 and actually plotted it and made a graph. Um, so what did you see in experiment 1.2? Hopefully you were able to analyze your data using graphs and make a few conclusions. You should have seen that mass does not affect the period or the number of swings per minute of a pendulum. So basically your graph should have resembled a straight horizontal line 
like the first graph and think about this box. The straight line tells us that there is no relationship between the independent variable, which was mass on the x-axis, and the dependent variable, which was average number of swings or period, on the y-axis. Okay, so we did the same thing with our second set of data. We went and um, plotted it and made a graph. In part two, this was a very different story. The graph should look like a slightly curvy line like the one shown in figure 1.28. In analyzing this data, the graph indicates that there is a direct relationship between the length of a pendulum, which, are, which was our independent variable that we have on our x-axis, and the period, or the number of swings of the pendulum, which was our dependent variable, which is on the y-axis. In other words, as the length of the pendulum increases, so does the period. All right, thank you for joining us in this experiment. I can't wait to see everybody's formal lab write-ups.